This is supposed to be the 4th of July special, but my laptop fried right before I want to make this video. But late is better than ever, guys. And I just want to show you my utter jealousy on the amount of freedom that you guys have in there. America is filled with citizens that are happy to carry on with their guns and even spreading their emotos to participate in the latest deathmatch tournaments. America has its own interesting fascination of guns and the rights to carry them through the Second Amendment. Speaking of the Second Amendment, I've noticed that some people who are anti-guns to have some... Well, really childish attitude, let's just say. So Angry Joe just uploaded a 24-minute video in which he and his mates just fire some random guns in the shooting range to celebrate Independence Day. Just absolutely innocuous video of him shooting guns on a shooting range with his friends. Absolutely nothing harmful or damaging, nothing to see here. That is, until you see people's reactions to it. There's a good reason why I call YouTube comments cancerous, especially when the channels are pretty damn big. So we have a Hispanic dude and his chums enjoying guns in the shooting range legally, and people in the comments throw an absolute hissy fit. I mean, seriously, guys, what in the name of God? How immature can you be that you find a bunch of dudes firing guns disgusting? I love the irony on the first comment on display. Read your comments, for God's sake. They took their morals and shove it down up to people's throats. I don't expect much of Angry Joe's fanboys, but fucking seriously, man, what a bunch of killjoys. Oh, and I love this one, too. This is disrespectful for those who died during mass shootings. Dude, do you know what happens right after Orlando? A bunch of gay people buying guns. I shit you not. A mass shooting happened in a gay club and a bunch of gay people are rushing in to buy guns to defend themselves. Why are these gay people buying the things that kill their own? Maybe, just maybe, the gun isn't really the problem here. The person holding the gun that is the real problem. And let's not forget that in multiple occasions he claimed himself to be a part of multiple terrorist organizations. <laughs> Don't jump to conclusions, eh, Salon, but when it's gamers fighting for ethics in game journalism, let's call that a terrorist group. Oh, how naive of me, expecting intelligence from the same publication that says pedophiles didn't do nothing. I swear to God, people are so moronic these days. We have the German minister blaming the shootings at Munich for those awful, horrendous video games. Yeah, a guy who has a history of mental illness and illegally carrying firearms is now the equivalent of a 12-year-old shoving a halberd up to giant socks ass in Dark Souls. Jesus Christ, man. Now, these irresponsible Tumblrite reality deniers are having power in the government and shifting the blame of a confirmed badly parented, mentally ill person to something that half of the population plays. As if that's not enough. We have the new South Wales Police Commissioner warning people for violent video games. What the fuck, guys? Do your motherfucking job and take some responsibility. While hailing from disparate backgrounds and espousing divergent manifestos, the one trait these shooters all share without exception is narcissism and entitlement, and you honestly wonder where these fuckers come from? Us, motherfucker! The left shrieks about video games and gun control. The right bellows about violence and entertainment and all these things we do because it's an infinitely more appealing exercise than peering into the nebulous ether of our modeled souls and honestly asking the question, did I help cause this? And now we still have those irresponsible morons who blames massive tragedy on everything without even addressing the real issue at hand. The fact that these morons want to use the easy route to just ban guns insults my freaking intelligence. Banning guns do not reduce violent crime. Chicago has strict gun control laws and guess what? It's always in the top three in murders and homicide. Do you know that there are not one, not two, not three, 12 mass shootings prevented thanks to good guys with guns. Six months ago, my friends got to witness the most barbaric violent outbreaks of fucking morons stabbing each other with machetes and knives without any consideration of decency and human empathy. Absolutely nobody in my country goes, oh, we should definitely ban knives and machetes. It's the fucking morons using those things. And the fact that the developed country out of bumfuck nowhere can pinpoint the problem with a sharp scalpel directly to the bumhole and rectum of the real fucking issue at hand just goes to show you that America is more retarded than a stillborn albino baby born from two autists with Down syndrome. What are you gonna do next? Advocating for the ban of guns in video games? No. No. No, 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 that, that, that can't be real. That cannot be real. You cannot be fucking serious. God help me.
Before we get into the actual article, let me give you a little recap of my gaming credentials. This video is made by a guy who has been Deus Ex 1 in a non-lethal run, Deus Ex 3 in a non-lethal run, beat a lot of Metal Gear Solid 5 missions in S ranks, all of which are non-lethal runs, beat Metal Gear Solid 3 in a non-lethal run, been dishonored with a low chaos status, blackjacked everybody on Thief, the Dark Project, didn't kill anyone in Market Ninja, beat an Undertale in a non-lethal run, didn't kill anyone in any of the Splinter Cell games, beaten SWAT 4 entirely non-lethal, so I'm a guy who has a really damn good history of non-lethal runs, and I absolutely want games to have non-lethal runs. However, I don't go into game developers and complain that guns exist just because I didn't like guns. If you're the kind of moron who would do such a thing, get a flagpole and shove it down up your ass. I'm in some ways an artist, and as an artist, I'll let other artists to do whatever the hell they want with their art. I won't remove other people's rights to use guns in video games, even to the most horrifying of examples. Seriously, man, this is probably one of the most pathetic articles that I have ever read. And let me tell you, it gets stupider and stupider as we go on. One of the few surprises from E3 this year is Watch Dogs 2. It's not the reveal itself that's the surprise, but that it's bright and silly and features a charismatic lead that vaguely resembles a human being rather than a robot sporting a baseball cap. But as I watched the demos and trailers, there was something that didn't seem quite right, something that didn't fit. It was hard to nail down at first because it's almost ubiquitous in video games, to the point where I barely notice how odd it is. It's the prevalence of guns. Guns! Guns! Oh my god! Guns! Ew! Guns! Ew! Seriously, guns are pretty much the norm in video games. Why are you guys complaining now? Ubisoft Montreal have been really pushing the idea that you can play Watch Dogs 2 however you want. They do that with most of their open world games, as do most other developers designing sandboxes. It's this generation's versions of, you can climb that mountain you see off in the distance. What does it really mean though? Scrub away the marketing speak and playing however you want tends to mean that you can choose between stealth and aggression. In the case of Watch Dogs 2, you can opt to use Marcus's many many fun toys like drones, RC cars and tasers, or you can just be boring and spray bullets of an assault rifle. As if drones, RC cars, and tasers are effective during shooting sections in the game. Makes freaking sense. It just seems so unnecessary, the second option, and a bit nonsensical. I mean, Marcus is a bespectacled activist who ostensibly wants to liberate San Francisco from a corrupt system. Blowing up cars and murdering goons don't really strike to me as a very sensible approach. If that's the case, it makes him a criminal at best, a terrorist at worst, but more importantly, doesn't really gel with what we know about the game so far. Okay, what do we know about the game so far? Well, we know that the game takes place in a setting where you are a character going against the system and therefore going against cops who are using guns and also sometimes going against street gangs who are also using guns. He is going against the law. He is a criminal and people are going to call him a terrorist anyway. And even if he's not all of those things, how would you think Marcus is able to defend himself against these obstacles when he is confronted by any of them? He is someone who wants to liberate San Francisco Francisco by hacking. Well, good for him. But it just so happens that hacking San Francisco will piss off a lot of people with guns, especially with the whole CTOS thing connecting pretty much everybody. So he arms himself with guns as a way to defend himself. For someone who is going against the cops and random street gangs, I think that's the most sensible option that you can take. And anyone who thinks otherwise would put Marcus as the latest excuse for the Black Lives Matter to kill those pesky cops. And here's the thing, Ubisoft Montreal could have made this game without a single firearm, and it could still offer a great deal of freedom. Let me get this straight. No guns for the player equals an equal amount of freedom when the player have guns. My BS detectors go in ding! They've already boasted about the many routes you can take to complete mission, and there's more than one way to get through a scenario subtly and without letting off a single bullet. Okay, what if you got spotted? What if street gangs are shooting at you? In that kind of situation, you have two options. Fight back. Or run away. Now, are you saying you should always pick up the runaway option because you don't like firearms? I'm sorry, but I have beaten Watch Dogs 1, and let me tell you, even in that game alone, it's impossible to always run away. There's always gonna be sections in which you are forced to fight gangs and cops. If you're gonna remove the guns from the player, you're gonna remove the chance to fight back, and you're gonna be nothing but sitting ducks. You cannot always run away. Jesus Christ, this is what happens when an anti-gun activist comes into video games and just goes to show you how pathetic these people are. Shut up. You are here, and you're an idiot. As games continue to grow in scope and complexity, interacting with visual worlds through guns feel increasingly antiquated. There are plenty of games that justify it, and I'm not gonna sit here and say Doom or Rainbow Six needs to lose the firearms, but Watch Dogs 2 is well-positioned to offer something different and novel. 
<sighs> okay, let's just say we remove the player's controls using guns. What stops the enemies from using guns? Are you just gonna ban the enemies from using guns? Then how are we gonna fight them? Just one hit KOs with a baton? Seriously, have you ever considered that? Have you ever actually considered that removing guns entirely from the control of the player in a game that relies on shooter mechanics makes the player defenseless sitting ducks? I love that last statement, by the way. You're, you're just insane and paranoid if you're gonna take your guns away. Jesus Christ, look at me. I'm fighting against gun control in video games. I cannot believe that an ideologue can be this horrendously stupid that I have to defend something that sounds so fucking pathetic. Thank you so much, Ryder. Thank you so much for being the biggest moron in the planet. I think she's right. You are retarded. And then there's the issue of making Marcus, specifically a gun user. Watch Dogs 2 featured a rare non-white protagonist accused of crimes he didn't commit. Uh, just so you know that this is coming from an ideologue, a rare non-white protagonist? So freaking what? How is that relevant? Because he's rare? So? I don't see Indonesians in the Western gaming circle and I don't throw up my panties over that kind of shit because that's fucking pathetic. Your people not represented in games. Well, so are mine. Go cry in the corner. Boo fucking who. He's the good guy seeking to clear his name and take down the dystopian surveillance state. The very simple point that being made, that profiling is both wrong and dangerous, is made hollow by the fact that the player can transform into that very stereotype. Well, here's the problem. Marcus is a hacker who is going against the system. Whether you like it or not, he definitely fits into the black guy criminal stereotype. And it makes sense in the context of the story. In fiction, becoming a stereotype isn't always bad as long as the role is significant to the story and not just a throwaway gag and even so you need characters that are stereotypes like background characters or typical doctors that heal your protagonist stereotypes on fictional characters aren't always bad bad writing is always bad one could argue that in a game that offers as much freedom as we're being promised we'll be able to avoid killing entirely and ubisoft montreal have already said as much but that misses the point Watch Dogs 2 is an open world game about hacking not battles not gang warfare not space marines uh... so what do the guns offer aside from cheap thrills the guns offer Marcus a chance to defend himself against other people that are trying to kill him, who use guns that are probably even more dangerous than the guns that he had. Even if you don't find fun on killing other people with guns in video games, you need to at least understand the importance of defending yourself against people who are trying to kill you. And even if it's just for Marcus to kill a bunch of people indiscriminately, how can this person not understand the concept of an open world action game it's a game where you can do whatever the hell you want relax nobody is gonna do the things that they did in video games in real life the sales of video games have risen and yet violent crimes have dropped what does that say to you god this article is retarded this is pretty much the end of the article but what interests me is a comment that was archived on this very page his comment is long but let's get it to the point that he makes in the end I just think guns are a power fantasy, it's just a look at the size of my dick thing, and men do like bragging about the size of their dicks, and that's what guns are about, they're just phalluses of death, it's really Freudian, it's become so Freudian in fact that it's being parodied in Cox, Gun, Cox, Lasers, and certain circles, because really, that's what it is, it's about domination, and all sorts of unhealthy power fantasies, it's just not my thing, so I wish for less guns too. Not gonna happen though. Okay, most people that I know who began their sentence with power fantasies are usually not the kinds of people that are fun at parties. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? What? Mom! Explain to me the what the- Oh my god! Mom! 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 Hey! 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 Calm down, Mom! Don't stop playing this game, okay? This is cultural! This is- This is power fantasy! This is male power fantasy! Stop playing this game right now! Oh my- this has to be stopped! This has to stop! This is a power fail power fantasy! You need to be condemned! You need to be ashamed of yourself! You stop playing this game right now! Stop playing it! I am I am reporting to the authorities! Oh, and thank you for making that last statement incredibly blatant. Here's what I have to say to that. You can go and preach your anti-gun laws whatever you like, but if you're going so far as to push your political agenda in something that wasn't even real, 
You just reached a whole new level of absolute desperation. If you want to truly get yourself some brain surgery, this article is a nice way to tranquilize your brain activities for the next few minutes. That's all for the video today. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.